It is the Riot Podcast. Hey, welcome to Thursday. Hey, Hudson. Hey, hey Isaiah. How Hello. you doing? Hey, everybody. Do you ever feel like when we do this, I always feel like I'm leaving a voicemail for the oh, for, for people. <laughs> the rest of the show, I feel like, is a show, and then this is like, I've called whoever just downloaded the podcast and I'm leaving a voicemail for them. One where it doesn't even ring through. It's just to let you know yep, the that kind the podcast where you, is available. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you send a direct voicemail. Yeah, that's it. Did you ever do that to people? I Like now, who even calls? But you would like, there's somebody you knew you didn't want to actually talk to on the phone. So you just So you it. logged into your voicemail and mm-hmm. did the send a voicemail oh thing. Oh my right. gosh. That was a great trick back in the day. And you're like, could you the, be that anxious about making phone calls? Yes. Yeah, yes, we are. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so what's on the show today, Isaiah? So today we learn what you think you would have learned in like kindergarten or first grade, that you're just not supposed to put things in your mouth that just don't belong to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and hold on. Confession okay, time. Though, down the road, because you get a new one. <laughs> Confession time. Yes. It's been so long ago. I don't even remember what that is in reference to. Oh, what? The golden medal. The gold medal. Oh, the gold medal. <laughs> <laughs> Were you just agreeing to agree? Oh, uh, yeah. Hudson was like, yes. That's yeah. right. Well, I that mean, is that is something I you don't do. That's do something you don't do. It is involving a uh, gold medal yep. and a softball player for the team in Japan and what happened and what the outcome of that is. Yeah, we're, we're not done with the Olympic talk we, yet. Isaiah, you needed to spell it out more for yeah, us. I know. Apparently. I thought that was pretty obvious. But again, but. I, don't, <laughs> I also don't want to spoil things sure. sometimes. So <laughs> That's just cool. details. I, I, I like him being okay. cryptic. It's just I totally admit. <laughs> I forgot we even talked about that until yes, then. Well, let's course. see if you notice the next one. Yeah, yeah, the next one. So this one I'll be a little more straightforward with. Uh-huh. We talked about how we will not get to contact aliens oh, I for a long that. time. And even if we do, we will not hear back from them for even longer. So I you definitely need to find remember out the, that. How many years it says uh, that you will need to possibly wait to mm-hmm. hear for our communication and from I them. Just, it just always seems like uh, these kind of stories seem like a cover your butt type situation <laughs> for the alien believers is what I think. We also talk about how there isn't that much of a difference between breadsticks and the actual <laughs> crust of a pizza. That's right. Yeah, that was a... Uh we're all just looking in a mirror kind of that was the last thing we talked about I yeah. believe and I think we can all agree how we wouldn't be mad if pizza showed up right now oh yeah no. we could go <laughs> for that sticks. we need uh you know what we should do we're having the protest in studio tomorrow yeah we should get a pizza for him you want that's just... really for us but it'll, that will be our excuse are we gonna order it in or like heat it up uh, order it in. No, it's they're like, not open that early. Saying, there like, has to be like some pizza place that opens at 10. I It'll probably be it. Little Caesars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on. They're open 24-7. <laughs> they're like, sure, we still have some in the case. Right, we'll fine. just yeah, send it over. Let's just, fine. We'll get a frozen pizza. Is DiGiorno good for everyone? I Ooh, no I, screaming Sicilian. Is that the good one? That's a good one. Well, right I'll let there. you take charge of that. Uh-huh. It seems like you have, and it's your passion project. Yep. So you My find passion. us. You bring in whatever you want. You can bake it too if you, <laughs> you want. Can, hey, you give <laughs> me you the preheat. You do it all. You give me the company card, and we're good to go. <laughs> well, we'll see it's tomorrow on the podcast. We won't remember to do anything with pizza. No, yeah. probably not. Probably not. <laughs> but you can. You will hear the protest in the podcast yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, we also coming have in. Fever Fever, a mm-hmm. band coming back back to Radio U with some new stuff. So lots of good things in the podcast today and even more coming to the podcast tomorrow. Yeah, between all that, you'll hardly hear from any of us at all. <laughs> so that'll, that'll make it probably better. Well, make sure you subscribe to the podcast if you are. Uh, it's weird, but unsubscribe and subscribe again. Mm-hmm. That brings us up in the podcast ratings. And then make sure you leave a review. Uh, five pizzas. Five pizza stars. <laughs> yes, give us a very, a very nice review and tie it into food That's somehow right, five if you would like. Because you right. love the show, and we would love to have a chance to thank you for leaving such a nice review. Yeah, of course. So do all that, as Nikki said, and uh, make sure you join us tomorrow for all of the other festivities. Thanks for listening. All right. Talk to you later. You might be thinking that this won't be quite as bad the second time around. Well, you'd be greatly mistaken. We're listening to the worst of the Riot Podcast. <laughs> Yesterday, we talked about how the peak of the Perseid meteor shower it's, oh, is today like Did anybody overnight? look up when we got here? I did. I, I, did. I looked out the window and I got You can't work. see out the window. I, lo- I tried. <laughs> you want to go outside after this during uh, the song? Is it still dark enough? Well, they said like we should still be, I don't know.
Yeah, I don't think we're going to get it. We can't even do the one thing. No, that's... <laughs> God. I was hoping you would have at least looked while you were driving because no. I was the one <laughs> that was trying to make you feel bad that no. I forgot about and it. You too. forgot too. Yeah. Did you check with Isaiah? Did he watch? Or no, what? I I didn't check with Isaiah. But we were talking about Marvel's What If. I was hoping he watched that, and he didn't watch no, that either. No, we, we were focused on other things. But we totally dropped the ball. There's still a chance for us tonight into, into yeah, tomorrow right. to also drop the ball. So uh-huh. I assume we will also not look well, up and see if there's any meteor showers. You know what? I can't confirm this, but I'm just going to use it as an excuse. It was too cloudy. Yeah. Well, we live with, uh, what is it, light pollution? Uh-huh. There's too much. You yep. can't see anything with Light. the lights. There was lights. There was clouds. There was just, we couldn't have seen it. It's so. too humid. I don't know if that does yeah, anything, but right. I feel like it does. Actually, there was like fog. It was so humid. Mm-hmm. It was, you could see it. Well, if so. anybody watched, is that what we say? Watched, looked up, saw the... Observed. Observed. That's a yeah. good one. If you saw any of the meteor showers that were supposed to happen last night or tomorrow, let us know if anybody saw anything. Yeah. If you uh, have an Instagram and you posted pictures, mm-hmm. we could then we could see them and then we would be able to pretend like we saw them. <laughs> good, saw perfect the, plan. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> uh, and that reminds me, this is nothing to do with that especially, but have you noticed on TikTok, if you share a TikTok with somebody... It shows you now when they watched it? Yes. Isn't that weird? I hate that feature. I hate it. (laughs) What made you bring that one up? (laughs) Because, oh, somebody shared their Instagram with us, and we're like, yeah, we looked. Uh, and we actually would look if it was meteor shower pictures or uh, something else, maybe not. They could show but if with you TikTok, were lying. yeah, <laughs> with TikToks, sometimes you don't actually like the person sharing with it. They don't have to actually watch you it. Don't it tells actually, on you. Yeah, I don't want to. I bet you. I haven't looked into the settings. I bet there's a way to turn that off. You think so? There must be. Or to make it automatically seem like you did watch it. Uh, I don't know about that, but there must be something to turn it off for like privacy reasons. Yeah. But yeah, you don't need TikTok telling on you if you didn't actually watch it. I know. No, I know that's what I'm worried about, that people are going to start, be, like, did you watch that TikTok? I did. Tell me about it. Tell, <laughs> wasn't it so funny when the guy did the thing? And I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah and I you're lying the whole time. Not a good feature at all. <laughs> Worst of the Riot Podcast. You see those big, giant water tanks around, and or the water towers, and you think to yourself, wonder what if you could go swimming inside those. Oh, yeah. I wondered if, well, first, how do you, do you climb up it? Yeah. (laughs) Is there an elevator we don't see (laughs) or something? And if not, like a pulley system? Yeah. But yeah, I always wondered if you can get inside, even though I doubt you could. (laughs) Well, that's what you bring your friends for. One pulls you up. (laughs) There has to be a a way to get inside, right? I, well. What if they need to clean it or something? Yeah, I don't know. There has to be a hatch. Yeah. Well, in this case, there is. Uh, This one isn't exactly, uh, it's not one of the big water towers, but it's a giant water tank. Yeah. Uh, Very similar. It's in Athens, Alabama, and a woman decided overnight that she wanted to go swimming in it. It is- uh, Well, when you want to go swimming, Yep. (laughs) sometimes you you just make it work. You got to find somewhere, and it was, it's been pretty hot and humid. Everybody wants to get cooled down. Especially in Athens, Alabama, the- uh, the Water tank, for reference, this is 70 feet high. 350,000 gallons of water. She broke into the fence barrier, climbed the ladder to the top of the tank. Yeah, now they're giving her a mental health evaluation now that they pulled her out. Uh, But I don't, I mean, maybe she has mental health issues, but don't we all? You know, like... The heat will do, like, I mean, you... And like if that if that's making you mentally insane, wanting to go into a into a giant water tank to go swimming, I guess I have an issue too. I think it was more what was going on inside. Uh-huh. So they said that it was repainted this past week. Yeah, and they did not secure the hatch. So there right. is a hatch. There's a hatch. There's a hatch to I get in. It. And I, I think it. the mental health thing comes from the fact that they really could not get her to swim to them. Oh yeah. And they had to really convince her. They were finally able to get her out with a harness and helped her down the ladder. So that's why they were a little bit more concerned because if you break in and you're just goofing off, yeah. you're like, all right, fine, I'm coming over. Right. Uh, but she really wanted to stay swimming. <laughs> she really but wanted to stay in there. Actually, hearing that it has a hatch makes me a lot more concerned mm-hmm. about wanting to do this because that makes it sound like the, I guess I wouldn't want to be in the water tank if there was like a roof over top of it. Yeah. Especially at night where it'd be all dark in there. Well. Now that's, okay, now you start to see why maybe she does need a mental health evaluation. It's like those pod places where you go swimming in the egg. 
Uh, so the sensory. Oh yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. Like, those like are it's really you're being popular. you're being born or you're, you're in the womb. <laughs> you're reemerging. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so they did say they did need to drain all three hundred and fifty thousand gallons. Uh-huh. They drained the tank overnight. Wait, it because had, of her? Yeah, it had to be sanitized and then filled back up again. Oh no! What is what are they using the water for? Well, for I mean, now they're not using that water for anything. It, it can't. You can't have people in it. <laughs> Don't say we didn't warn you. This is the worst of the riot. I'm going to stop saying that this is the last time we're talking about the Olympics because it just keeps coming back up somehow. (laughs) There's more stories that make their way. I think it's because there was so much Olympic news Mm -hmm. that they just can't go like cold turkey. Uh (laughs) There has to be just still a trickle down to nothing. And just in time for then talk about the Winter Olympics. Yeah, well, it's funny that... uh, in most situations, you don't get follow-up stories on stuff in the news anymore. It's you, like you never see it when stuff happens. But at the Olympics, for some reason, uh, they they actually are following up. Maybe it's just because there's not as much going on, especially if they if for news companies if they want to talk about something other than the virus. No, they have. They just need they have something the, else. The space. For there's it. not enough politics <laughs> stuff to fill all their time anymore, so they got to find something. So what happened was in this story is one of the Japanese softball team players, uh, they won the gold and one of their players went back to her hometown at a ceremony. Yep. To, uh, you know, just be congratulated and celebrate the win and everything. Her name is Miyu Goto. Goto, Mm -hmm. I'm guessing is how you pronounce it, but don't hold me to that. The mayor of the town. His name is Takashi Kawamura. And it looks like it was Nagoya. Nagoya, Japan. And during the their little celebration ceremony type thing, he pulls down his mask and she, she's given him the gold medal to observe. And he puts it around his head. He puts it in his mouth. He bites and it. And bites down, which so, is, that's a normal thing to do to the gold medal. It is when it's. To prove that it's like real metal. It's just a joke type thing. It's normal when it's your metal. Right. It's not. <laughs> you don't. It, this applies to metals. Uh-huh. This applies to body parts. It applies to, it applies to all kinds of things. If it doesn't belong to you, don't you don't it. put it in your mouth. So they Usually said, <laughs> is how it works. They said that uh, the uh, community, the mayor received a lot of criticism on a couple of levels. Mm-hmm. So it's just not polite. It's just not yeah, what you do. Right. It showed a lack of respect for her and for the medal. But then also you have the coronavirus layer. Of course. And in Japan, there's an etiquette, uh, mm-hmm. which is supposed to be followed. And the fact that he did that... Many, many, many people were mad at the mayor for biting on the medal that was not his, the yeah. gold medal. Well, the the good news is the situation is getting amended because <laughs> the International Olympic Committee said we are in line with Mrs. Goto, Goto and they are going to exchange her uh, sullied, uh, contaminated medal with a fresh new she one. She gets a new medal. Yeah. Yay. Which means they'll have to recycle more electronics to, oh, to put it together. Do, yeah, that's how they were making it. Well, I thought that's a nice gesture. I don't yeah. know, like, how common is it if something comes up and you get a new metal, like, to replace your other one? Yeah. Uh, but again, etiquette's very important. Mm-hmm. And they said that this mayor, I'm just looking at the picture, man. He's just I know, got a he just looks so dumb, it. doesn't he? He's just like, I don't know what I'm about ready to start, <laughs> but I'm starting a problem. And you're not supposed to do that. And that's nice of them to offer a new gold medal for her to replace the gold gross one yeah because man <laughs> i i just totally get the idea of you work so hard to get your medal to get your accomplishment and that's going to be something you display probably in your house yeah. for the rest of your life and this and stranger then, and then every time you look at it it's the stranger the, the mayor of your town just, took a bite out of it it's wrong so yeah. they're going to provide her a new gold medal this is Radio U's Worst of the Riot. And these uh, these airline restraints, they are getting out of hand. Well, this one is, I think, like, on a different level. Yeah. Well, th- this <laughs> one is age. a lot different. Uh, there's a news story. An American Airlines flight from Hawaii to Los Angeles. Yeah. It was uh, leaving out of Maui, but it had to be diverted, I guess, pretty quickly because it landed in Honolulu. It was because a 13-year-old boy became disruptive on the flight. 
he was uh, being physical with his own mother mm. and attempted to kick the window out of, of the, plane. the plane. Yeah. Well, at first when I saw the story, I thought, well, where? Because sometimes I know, you know, when you were younger, if you traveled, you would just be sitting there and they yeah. kind of watch over you. But the mom was there. The They believe because of some developmental disabilities yes. that there's this layer. So they had to be very delicate with what this was going on. Right. But if you can imagine you're flying uh, over the water, especially mm-hmm. like you are very nervous yeah. <laughs> with such a flight. And they said that people were just very nervous because of how out of control he got. Yeah. I mean, and again, you do have to be very delicate when it comes to the developmental disabilities, as opposed to. When it's an adult that's drunk, like mm-hmm. that's their choices they're making. And so it's a little different of they're going to be exper- if the consequences are they need to be duct taped so they that they can be duct taped. Right. Because, <laughs> yeah, because they, they are at least somewhat aware of what they're doing is sure. disruptive and wrong. Whereas with, with this 13 year old boy that they haven't confirmed for sure that he has developmental disabilities, but it seems like that might have been the case. And uh, and so you have to just handle it in a totally different way. So they do say the airline and everybody wants to be clear. They didn't duct tape him they to the seat. They didn't him at but, first people thought. Yeah, they did have to restrain him. They used the flex cuffs. And I mean, what do you do? Because he has to get home some like I'm assuming he they needed to get back to the mainland and they were in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. He's got to get home somehow. I Can don't he just know. never fly? It was he had to have gotten there, it so maybe he's seemed, just having a really bad day. It seemed like an episode of some sort, yeah. uh, but they used flex cuffs, which are kind of like zip ties. Uh-huh. Uh, so they used that, and then they had to take care of the passengers because when the flight was diverted, uh, they were put on other flights or giving hotel rooms and then waiting, but they don't give an update on like the family. And yeah. if you, because of this, again, if the other people who were duct taped, um, in the last few weeks yeah. <laughs> on airlines, like I imagine they either get jail time, they get fines or they get a ban on the airline. Yeah. But if he's, I mean, this was 13 right. and your mom's there. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I don't know if it's quite the same. Um, I assume he would be allowed on a plane again, but I don't know. Yeah. And then at least uh, the good news is for the people that had to stay in Hawaii an extra day, they got to stay in Hawaii an extra I day. Know. <laughs> yeah, it's like if the airline pays for the hotel room and stuff, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because it, yeah, it's not your fault. So yeah. I would assume you get some kind of, uh, you know, it's not completely falling on you to try to find your way back home and get accommodations in the meantime. So it didn't work out so bad. Well, for, they're saying there's that worse places to be stranded. It's very hard for airline workers to know because each situation is so mm-hmm. different. And on the planes, when they were duct taping the two people, uh, it seemed like they said they didn't have any other yeah. <laughs> ways to keep them tied down. Well, yeah, that's, and they're that physically was like last so case much scenario. stronger. Yeah. Uh, but at least it seemed good that they had something that could help that wasn't duct tape yeah. on this plane. Well, it would not be good to have the headlines being they duct taped a developmentally disabled child. Year old. Yeah, no, so you can't. that would that wouldn't be good. So. But he was fighting so much, like yeah. you'd be surprised at how strong someone who is having a, a problem can really become. Yeah, and again, I mean, whether it is somebody with a developmental disability or whether they are drunk, either way, that makes it sometimes a lot more difficult to. Uh, reason with them? No, you can't. Yeah, so so again, it's not like you can just be like, "Hey, calm down, everything's okay." It's like you have to find some way so that he's not going to be physical with everybody, sure. and that's the difficult part of it. So they just American Airlines wants people to know that he was not duct taped. Yes, because uh, that's be very clear he was about not done that. that. Nope. The other people were uh-huh. the grown ups were. <laughs> They're fine with that. Absolutely. Have yeah, no we'll duct tape <laughs> grown ups all the time. <laughs> they need to put the duct tape like a roll right when you walk on the plane, yeah. so they're like, we're ready that's in case like a, they cause any that's problems. A threat. <laughs> Think of it as athleisure for your ears. Radio U's Worst of the Riot Podcast. Isaiah, I wanted to hear from him. I wanted him to pose this quandary to everyone. Mm -hmm. Because he was telling me about something that happened at the gym and I want and to hear more to about the gym? it. Yeah, right. Oh my what, gosh. what is going on? Will you please stop showing everybody up? <laughs> so I go to the gym the other day with my my best friend and, and we, you have a friend? Yeah, I know, right? Oh it keeps getting worse, I know. Stop is this a hot dog friend? <laughs> no, this oh, is a different, different friend. friend. That he would fit much friends. better though. He has multiple friends. <laughs> <laughs> but I go to the gym with him the other day and we meet there. He's coming straight from work and we get into the locker room 
And he looks at me and he's like, dude, no way. I was like, what happened? And he goes, I forgot my shoes. Oh, his workout shoes? His workout shoes. So all he has is his dress shoes. He's like, so we have three options. I can either wear my dress shoes. Yeah. I can wear no shoes at all. And still work out. And still work out. Uh-huh. Or we can just leave. And I was like, well, oh. we're not leaving because oh, I drove on. here. You should have like, taken leave. No leave chance we're leaving. To tell him to leave. <laughs> and so he's like, well, I think I'm just going to wear no shoes at all. And I was like, that's kind of disgusting. Yeah, that's horrible. Because you it's a public to? gym. Yeah. I have no idea if it's allowed or not. I assume Nobody it's probably not. Him. What gym was it? Can it was you say? Planet Fitness. Planet uh, Fitness. Well, so they don't care. They don't care. Get, that's why right. I said no one's going to say anything to you. But I was like, it makes it even grosser. <laughs> They'll give that you two bagels to put on your feet. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Walk around, you're fine. They, so, pro- they probably have like slippers that they, you know, lend out, you think? I don't know. The backup shoes. He does the whole workout without shoes on. Was an un- extremely uncomfortable the entire time. I was uncomfortable because I was like, dude, people are looking at you. But he was probably not even the weirdest looking person in there. <laughs> he was probably like like top five or so, but he wasn't even the top weirdest one without the shoes on. But still, it was disgusting. What do you guys think? I think Did he have that socks on? He had socks. Okay. <laughs> yes. I think. If he had no socks on, that would have been terrible. Well. There was that trend, and I'm sure it's still a thing that where you would wear the shoes with like the individual toes, the yeah, vibram, because vibram they're shoes? yeah because they're supposed to it's supposed to be more natural to work out that way. So maybe he could have just made up an excuse of like I'm being more natural. You know, this is better for my muscles or balance or something. But it's still gross. And so my other thought is if you're with when you're at the gym, you're supposed to wipe everything down, right? Yeah. So if he's wearing, if he's not wearing oh, shoes, he should just be wiping down the oh. ground the floor everywhere he, he walks, everywhere he stands, or just, just he should just be him. walking on wipes. So Isaiah, he should did put he a wipe down? Take yes. a step. Put a wipe down. Take did a step. he do just weights, or did he do like a treadmill or anything? He didn't get on the treadmill. We didn't do the treadmill. Just no running. Yeah, that'd be bad. I'm scarred from yeah. running a couple days ago. No more running <laughs> no. for a while. I'm taking a break from running after the 5K. Well, I'm impressed that he still. Stayed with the workout. Yeah. I thought you wouldn't be able to work out without shoes, but I don't think anybody's looking down to notice. Yeah, uh, I don't know. People are uh, people wandering eyes are always at the gym, <laughs> don't you think? <laughs> we don't know. We're not at the yeah, gym ourselves. We would, I guess we wouldn't know. But and his dress shoes were like super nice. They were so work. nice. Yeah. I told him to wear them. I was like, because he had like the worst part was he packed like an extra pair of socks because he like didn't he was wearing dress socks before. I was like, uh-huh. just put your dress socks back on. Strap those dress shoes on. I was like, you won't look that weird. <laughs> but he was like, no, I'm just going to go with no shoes. And no shoes probably looked less weird than, than, had the, dress shoes. than the dress shoes. But I at think. least if he was wearing the dress shoes, then he could have, like, nobody, I guess nobody said anything either way, but nobody really could have said anything with the work, uh, dress shoes because then it's like, well, he's wearing shoes. There's yeah. no rule against that. But he was risking getting thrown out. Oh yeah, uh, without wearing the shoes. So well, you could have just worn two socks. That also would have worked. A little extra. Would that, double down. Yeah. Unless you sweat a lot. Listen, I. Yeah, I mean, really. At least he worked out. Yeah. I know. That's <laughs> that's. So I can't weird. get we over leave, that. We didn't leave, so that <laughs> wasn't an option. I was like, I drove 15 minutes over here. We're not leaving. You wear whatever you want to, but I'm gonna work out. <laughs> we and find, if you're gonna do it with me. We find literally shoes. any excuse we can to not work out. Meanwhile, Isaiah and his friend. Had the perfect out, and then like, <laughs> nope, we gotta do this. We well, gotta push too. Uh, works at Planet Fitness. Like, do you guys offer? Because I know they'll they'll do like they'll sell shirts and stuff. So yeah. in case you forget something to work out in, but are there like slip ons? Are there uh, workout slippers? Uh-huh. <laughs> like, Could is you there just something else you can do? Fashion a pizza box into and, and a shoe that? just to have Some something tissue on your feet. Yeah. Or something you can put on there. <laughs> I mean, people nowadays uh, they they probably won't bring it up. Yeah, <laughs> no. no. Everyone knows better than to mention something. <laughs> now he set a precedent, and we've talked about it on the air. People are going to be being like, "Hey, I don't, I don't even feel like wearing shoes. No I'm shoes gonna- today. <laughs> it's a whole new gym <laughs> etiquette thing we're going to have to overcome." The riot isn't all bad, but this is the worst of the riot. Radio U. Air Force is making some changes. The United States Air Force is now, uh, well, starting in October, going to be making some changes to their rules and regulations about 
the appearance of their airmen. Oh, I didn't know, like, for the different branches uh-huh. that I think I, I'm sure they've been relaxing them in the last years and yeah. so. But as a non person <laughs> in it, <laughs> Wait, I you're not a person? Well, you know, like what I mean, a non uh, Air Force oh, or military person. You're not a person. service member? Exactly. Okay. I did not realize the rules and how deep those go. Yeah. Um, and I think some rules are good because, I mean, you, uh, you have to, like, that creates an atmosphere. Of, yeah, discipline. Discipline. Yeah, um, and uniformity. Yeah, but then on the other side, it keeps people from <laughs> being able to join. Feeling like an individual. Yeah. Yeah, so. right. Or, or, yeah, not being able to join in the first place. Uh, well, so here's some of the rules that they are changing. The big one seems to be that in the Air Force, starting later this year, you are going to be allowed to get scalp tattoos. Oh, you couldn't have those before. Yeah, before yeah. that was not allowed, but and I guess that is Are means they, something in the Air Force because your hair has to be cut so short, so short oh, and you would actually be able it. to see it. Yeah. So I assume it's not face tattoos because otherwise they'd say that. Yeah, I think that's there is a ones? distinction, but I don't know where they literally draw the line <laughs> on your face of where it's okay and where it's not. Is it for other branches of the military? Is it to the point where you can have tattoos that show, or yeah, I don't are you know. not allowed to? I actually, I will admit that I have no idea. <laughs> About the current What the actual regulations are. I do know, okay, my brother did Civil Air Patrol until very recently, Mm -hmm. which is similar. Uh, Like, it's kind of a precursor for some people, I think, that they'll start that when they're still a teenager um, and then eventually go into the Air Force. In Civil Air Patrol, you aren't allowed to even have facial hair, I don't believe. At least that was what... So I like the idea that you could have a scalp tattoo, but not facial hair. That's where we that's where we draw the line. Well, they're just all figuring it out. Yeah, right. It's it, everybody. They have their own regulations, and that's fine. Uh, some of the other rules there, uh, they say airmen will be allowed to wear morale patches on certain days. I don't know what that means, but to me, it just I just imagine like they can have a little smiley face or something, you know, to boost morale or like it's a little patch that says you can do it, buddy. I'm sure it's more official than that. Yeah, you think you guys will have to explain it to us if you're if you're in. Yeah, I don't know. (laughs) And and part of this is these are the expected changes, but they aren't official. And so we don't have the official wording of these until they actually officially put them in did the you, rule book the later part, on. They said this is for the Air Force, so the morale patches. Yeah. But Space Force personnel still will not be allowed to wear morale oh, patches. Oh, come on. <laughs> Like I still forget Space Force is real. Yeah, so like, like it actually counts. <laughs> it actually counts. And they're like, no, you can't do that there. I wonder if they're allowed to have uh, scalp tattoos. I don't know. This is just Air Force stuff. They say the relaxation to dress rules. Um, let's see. How do they phrase it? They'll also have different language with having hands in your pockets while walking. Yeah. Well, this is where I know. Uh, uh, if all the other stuff, this is where I know I could not be in the military because I couldn't deal with like the hand. <laughs> hand. I just couldn't deal with all the rules. I wouldn't be able to maintain my sanity trying to remember them all. Well, they're saying the hands in the pockets while walking or standing, using a cell phone or drinking water while walking. A lot of those have rules with it. Mm-hmm. They say the Air Force wants to drop the language so that commanders and airmen have the flexibility to adopt to whenever rules work best for their units. They say they trust that they can figure out what it takes and means to maintain standards without spe- <laughs> specifying exact behavior in every situation. Yeah, that's a good point. Now you can walk and do whatever you want. I know you're like, couldn't you couldn't walk and like and have drink your hands water. Yeah. and your pocket are out. I, I get that's a lot of rules. Yeah. Now, Nate just texted in. So for the army, we can't have tattoos on the hands, neck, or face. That's the limit. Mm. There's exceptions to policy in a case by case basis before you actually join. Mm. What about morale patches? Are uh, you allowed to? Nate what if a, you tattoo a morale patch on your scalp? <laughs> I don't know. Anybody know if a morale patch is anything else? Yeah, what is that even? <laughs> can somebody tell us what that means? They also saw just to be uh, to be inclusive, there's some, not just to be inclusive, but to be inclusive, mm-hmm. they made some changes for the ladies. Oh. They don't have to wear hosiery anymore. Oh, you had to wear a hose? Yeah. I don't think I... <laughs> I think I've had that since I was younger. Well, that's why you're not in the Air Force. Well, that and the tattoos, right? Yeah, right. (laughs) I just can't do it. Well, there we go. So uh, looking forward. Now you can join the Air Force and you don't even have to worry about the hose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. The alien talk has died down, but leading up to remember that like Pentagon report or whatever a couple weeks back where they they made like Fox News specials out of it and stuff. You know what I'm talking about? I just felt like in the news there was a lot of uh, alien talk. Yep. <laughs> there was a lot of speculation and it was like, we're finally going to find out about UFOs. And then they released the report that basically said, we don't know. And to, then you had people that were like saying, yeah, there are. And then others are like, no, there's not. Yeah. And it just seems like it would go in circles and then it died of, away. A lot of mixed signals. And yeah, once that report came out and didn't have the... You know, I guess what everybody was hoping for in one way or another was just a definitive answer of, yes, there's aliens. Mm -hmm. Since it didn't have that, it just all of a sudden went away. But now we're getting some new information from Harvard astronomers Amir Siraj and Abraham Loeb about contacting intelligent life elsewhere in the universe. Yeah. What do they say? They say we have to remember their, their theory is if... We were able to even reach what some of our communication was able to reach another uh, life form somewhere else that we would have to wait about 3000 years for them to respond. Oh, to so get back with us? by the time we reach them, <laughs> they may be like our communication that we're sending now, their civilization may be long dead or uh, we're long dead. Yeah. Or yeah. Right. It, more likely, just as likely that civilization on Earth is long dead by the time we get anything back. Well, OK, so 3000 years it would it would maybe take if there was some other life form to hear back from them. Yeah. But, which, which means keep this article if someone's mad at you because you don't text right back. Yeah, right. <laughs> because, like, this is on next level. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's, uh, I just feel conflicting signals because they're talking about this now. And it's when just, again, weeks ago we were talking about these sightings of UFOs from the military agencies. So if they're already flying around our planet, why do we have to wait 3,000 years for them to respond when they already could just, they could just jump out of the ship? I if those know. are actual UFOs, that saying, doesn't take 3,000 years. They're just saying that if we've ever tried to communicate and just send a signal out, yeah. like out there, uh -huh. that it could take 3,000 years to get a reply back if there's anything out there. I, Whenever I see stories like this, uh, alien talk like this, where it's like, it won't be, it won't be 3,000 years till we hear from them, it makes me think this is just alien believers trying to cover their bases because- if it's three thousand years from now, they can't we'll never be. Know. They can't be proven wrong <laughs> in their right. lifetime. It's like, well, there's they're out there. It's just it takes them so long to get back. Yeah. So I'm not wrong in my prediction that they exist. It's just I can't be proven right because I'm dead. This is based on a principle that asserts that we are unlikely to live at a pri a privileged time, <laughs> and so the likelihood of another planet that you can live on, like Earth, uh, mm -hmm. going on right now. Through an analog of our first century of radio <laughs> communication, uh, that's a privilege that we don't necessarily believe is is around or true. Uh -huh. um, so they say that a response expected within our time frame mm -hmm. would be a lot to assume and could take much, much longer uh, if so you ever got one. Is the idea saying that... That it's just based off, not just based off of how long it would take to send and receive based off how far away it is, but also about the aliens being able to evolve, yeah. like civilization wise to have the next technology to get back to us. Basically, how who are we to think that our communication would match if there was something sure, else? Sure, yeah. Who are we? <laughs> That's what we all want to know. Or who are they? It doesn't yeah. mean that theirs is more advanced what if, or behind. But what if they are? I don't know. If they're, if they're not more advanced, why do we even want to talk to them? If I have to wait 3,000 years, though, I'm, I'm not yeah. counting on that. Not interested? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> I guess we'll never, we'll never know. We'll never get the answers I'm that we want. I'm not living that long. <laughs> The equivalent of someone's lint collection. This is the Worst of the Riot podcast. I know it was one week ago that we had the NFL first preseason game, yeah. the uh, Hall of Fame game. But tonight is the first slate of preseason games, the first official week of NFL preseason. And with that said, fantasy football season, that means you're getting into your drafts now. I don't play, but Isaiah, do you play? Isaiah, I do the producer. Play. I've been playing fantasy football for probably like nine, probably like nine years, I think. Yeah. 
I've been doing it, and I absolutely adore it. I love, love, love fantasy. So, football. are you you're deeply embroiled already? Have you drafted your team this year, or do you have? Is it a keeper league? <laughs> no, it is not <laughs> a keeper to learn league. The terms. I know all the terms. It is not a keeper league. Um, it's a new one every year, but I do play with the same people yeah. every single year. But we have not done the draft yet. We usually do it like after like the second or third preseason football uh-huh. game, and then. And then we get into it. Do but, you play for money or what are we playing for? So last year we did play for money. Oh, that wow. was the first year we You're played for money. <laughs> yeah, we're growing up. I'm like, all right, everybody. We can all pitch in 20 bucks yeah, at this point, right? right. Like, But uh, well, before that, I it was found, just for fun. Yeah. I found that in fantasy sports, a lot of times if you want to keep people invested, the only way to do it is to get them to pay money or else half of the league will just yes. peace out about halfway through the year. You do yeah. have to put something in there to get everybody committed to it. So, uh, have you won? I have won a couple of years. Really? But uh, the trend recently, the past probably four years, my, my girlfriend started playing with me as well, and she's been playing for probably four years now with us. Uh-huh. And the trend recently is she has beaten me every <laughs> single year that she's played. I One year, I think it was two years ago, I actually lost to her in the championship. Oh, no. And, <laughs> and don't, like, pity me on air and say, oh, you're losing to your girlfriend, uh-huh. do you know anything? Let yeah. me tell you, she knows what she's doing. Yeah. Yeah. She is not messing around. She takes it very seriously. When we get around this time, she's like, are we starting the draft yet? Like She's, like, in my ear, ready to roll. So don't have, be on your high horse. Like, you can't even beat his girlfriend in fantasy Aww. football. No, she would beat you. Let me tell you, she from, would beat you. From what you've told us, though. She's better at you than everything. That's what yeah, I was okay. going to say. Wait, 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 wait. Shouldn't we have hired your girlfriend instead? Listen here. <laughs> is she available? I mean, we have one more seat over there. No, she is, she is very busy, okay? Aww. She's busy doing other things. But listen, she is not. No, and fantasy football, I am better. Uh-huh. But somehow she keeps on beating if, me. Wait, if you're better, then why do you keep losing? I don't know. It's the luck of the draw, you know. Sometimes you just get that right player, and then uh-huh. they put up a bunch of points, and I guess she just has better karma than me. I don't know. Well, so, we need her involved if we do the Radio U Fantasy Football yeah. League. Yeah, yeah I know, right? We did, a couple years back, did a Radio U Fantasy Football League, kind of. Yeah. It was like It was one guy who worked here who doesn't anymore, but he ran it. And so it was like some of us and then some people from other people he knew. And guess who won? Did you win? I won. Yeah. No yeah. way. I beat uh, our former, another former employee. We got to the championship and I beat him. So Did we do money on that one? Or? No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Which is why everybody was not invested yeah. by the end and of the year until yeah. me and like two other people. You split the station. <laughs> so wait, who is the, uh, you said you need the right player. Who's the right player? See, have this you done year, your research already? Or? Yeah, if you have the number one pick, somebody that I think that you should pick that you're probably forgetting about because he was injured for a majority of last year, uh-huh. but he is the king of fantasy football, and yeah. that's Christian McCaffrey. Ah, uh, yes. He's, two years ago, he was amazing, and pretty much if you had him, you probably won your league. Yeah. Don't forget about him this year just because he was hurt last year. He is an absolute beast. So he's your he's your sleeper, yeah, kind for, of. For number one pick, I think a lot of people want to pick Derrick Henry or Alvin Kamara, but yeah. it's, it's Christian McCaffrey, well, undoubtedly. For everybody who's about ready for your fantasy league, just uh, text Isaiah yep. at 877 you and then he'll ask his girlfriend yeah. uh, <laughs> what should be the picks, and then yeah. that way you'll know the best ones to go with. Exactly. <laughs> we need to get her on for a segment. I know, least. right? <laughs> we need to have her phone in for a fantasy yeah. football yep. segment. Yep. Like, hey, just text ask who do you think yeah so now we got isaiah's information we're good on that but what about you yeah what are you gonna do we want then? the real tips we, he we says christian mccaffrey but we know that's not right because yeah. he can't beat you so who do you say we've done you a favor by selecting the best of the worst and compiling it all in one place riot podcast radio you wouldn't pizza be really good right now? Man, that sounds like a good idea. When's our next riot uh, pizza food fight? Yeah, we never do that, do <laughs> we, could, we? We could be like, oh, does this cheese pizza taste good? I don't know. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know if it'll be good or not. <laughs> Let me have another piece. <laughs> yeah, something I've always wanted to do is, and it's not the most original idea, I just want to do it because it'll be fun, is rank stuff, like rank foods, Yeah, and especially blind taste tests. What if Ooh. we got in like a slice of Little Caesars, Pizza Hut, like all the major places to and blind taste tested it and see which one we actually like. What if we find out we actually like Little Caesars the best? Uh, when we leave all the baggage behind. For, 
I can you don't tell, know. I can tell based on their cardboard of a crust. <laughs> <laughs> and the last time I got sick, that will never leave you. You just you just don't know. Because it was from Little Caesars, but <laughs> you're right. But we would need to do that like in the evening because yeah. I don't want to reheat the pizza in the morning. Well, um, but... maybe there's no better way to tell than eating the pizza cold. Oh, yeah, you're right. Or That's when you really find out the merits. We bring in the air fryer. There we go. Because if you air fry your pizza, it can be better than the first that time you be, get it. That could be, especially if it's from Little Caesars. It might be <laughs> might benefit from that. Stop bringing them up. I had I had a pizza last night, actually. What'd you have? Uh, Papa John's. Hey. Yeah. And I ate way more than I should. Usually, more often than not, when I get a pizza, I eat the majority. Like, me and my wife will split it, but I'll leave, like, one piece for yeah. the next day because we'll get pizza and, like, breadsticks or whatever. And last night, I just ate the whole thing. So I just didn't. I didn't today. leave anything Aww. over because, and it was a mistake last night to eat that much. <laughs> now you're really. And now it's it. a mistake today because I have not a lot of options for lunch. So. Did you eat all the breadsticks too? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that's what I mean. You go the breadsticks <laughs> first, and then you usually have like two pieces of pizza, and then you have the other two pieces left over. That's why I like ordering pizza and stuff the best because you're like, do I want this bread or this bread? <laughs> <laughs> this bread with cheese or that? Yeah, bread with cheese? right. Which it's variety all the same of thing. cheese bread do I want? <laughs> And the real bad thing is when you get the cheesy breadsticks and then you dip them in marinara. Yeah, it's just pizza. <laughs> Why? Are you, but it's like it's two different things. No, it's not. I'm glad you noticed that too. Yeah. Oh, I do the exact same thing. Uh, and and at Papa John's, it's really bad too because you can tell that the breadsticks are they're not even different than the crust of the pizza. It is oh, literally it's just out. the crust yeah. with nothing on it. <laughs> 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 and it's still like, this is a side dish. I'm glad I ordered it extra. Yeah. But uh, d- anyways, the whole reason I actually brought this up is because we have a little chart here that shows the different prices of pizza depending on where you live. It's the 2021 U.S. Pizza Index. Yeah, that makes it sound really official. It does, Like we're it? talking about something scientific here. It's just a list. They've gone through, this is uh, from a website called Expensivity, and they have evaluated the average price of both a cheese pizza and a pepperoni pizza by state. Mm. And I didn't realize that it would fluctuate so much. It does. It's yeah. not like, um, well, I don't know, because I, well, we order usually more than one. Mm-hmm. So, like, I can't remember what a, just a cheese pizza costs. Yeah. And there's so many deals where they play the game of, like, it's inflated because of this delivery. Right. Or it's that. I, I never really feel like I know what the actual price of the pizza is. Yeah, it's hard to grasp. But, you know, to me, it. I order more often than not from a chain, mm-hmm. uh, like I hate to say it, but even even the like local chains, but still where they're chains. And so you kind of are just used to it being the same price. And if it's one that you like, if you go to Pizza Hut in one state to another state, the prices are going to be pretty darn similar for everything. But if you were to go to more local places, I'm sure the prices fluctuate a lot more. And so I think that's where the price difference comes from. So what they found was if you're looking for the cheapest cheese pizza by state, you're going to want to go to North Dakota where you could get a pizza for an average of $6.64. North Dakota. Which feels very cheap. And that also makes me wonder... Are they like what is the size that they're talking about? Um, I don't know, but I think this covers probably they're going to say the same size for all of these. They say yeah, Alaska right. is the most expensive cheese pizza, mm-hmm. and that's at nine dollars and twenty one cents. Something tells me that you're not on average getting the best cheese pizza from Alaska. Why not? I just don't think that the people... I just think it costs more to get the materials there. I know. I I agree. I think that's why it's expensive. It's not more expensive because it's better, (laughs) is what I'm trying to say. (laughs) I just don't think a lot of the most gifted pizza chefs are moving to Alaska. You're saying that. I'm not. (laughs) I'm Uh, saying it. I will stand by that statement. The city with the cheapest pepperoni pizza, that's Virginia Beach at 626. And then Detroit is the city with the lowest density of pizzerias in the United States. And Fort Lauderdale has the highest density of pizzeria. This was the worst of the riots. And we'd like to congratulate you on having the stomach to stick around to the very end. The riot exists because Radio U exists. And Radio U only exists because of your support. Find out more and give now at RadioU.com slash donate.